Hello guys, in this video I'll be showing you the DNA results, uh, GD match, predicted traits, predicted phenotype of a Paleolithic Gravetian from Austria. This is an extremely ancient individual. Uh, let's get into his DNA. This is what he looked like. With my Nashakot, he's predicted to have dark brown eyes at 72.4% uh, likelihood, a Greek shaped nose at 82% likelihood. Greek shaped nose is kind of like a long aquiline, kind of a Middle Eastern looking nose. And he's predicted to have black hair at 99.6% likelihood. Uh, with Ysec, he's also predicted to have a very dark coloring. And with Snipper Free, he's predicted to have intermediate color skin, which is why I depicted him looking kind of brown instead of white. Uh, he's also, with Snipper Free, he's also predicted to have brown eyes and black hair. Uh, kind of consistent with Ysec and Nashakot. His genotype in DRD2 was that he was not a no-go learner and he was at an increased risk of schizophrenia. And this is not a typical result for a modern European, but I actually have a little theory that explains why he has this genotype. And the theory goes um, that the mutation for no-go learning has arisen, ar arisen later, after uh, his existence. When it comes to Comte's uh, Valmet variant, he was a warrior with the IO. The implications of this genotype is that it's most common outside of Europe and uh, it leads to quicker dopamine reuptake, which means less dopamine in the system. He did not have derived EDAR, which means he did not have uh, this gene implicated in East Asian facial features, so probably did not have East Asian facial features, which is why I depicted him uh, looking caucasoid or like white previously. Uh, and what's interesting is he had uh, the, M the sociopath gene, he had derived OXTR, which is the closest we got to the sociopath gene. Once again, quite an atypical genotype for a modern European. When it comes to the lactose persistence mutation that's uh, most frequent in Europeans, this individual did not have it, it's a European mutation. Uh, but I think this mutation came about much later than his existence. Once again, this is a very ancient individual and a lot of the modern mutations that Europeans have, he did not have. Uh, when it comes to polygenic traits, he had an above average risk of Crohn's disease. He had an above average risk for type 2 diabetes. Now, um, he also had an average risk of Parkinson's disease. Um, he had a slightly below average risk of schizophrenia and he had a average risk of bipolar disorder and finally he had a very high genetic risk for asthma. Uh, in fact, one of the highest I've seen. And this is his result with Eurogenes K13. Now, you would expect this individual to score 100% North Atlantic plus Baltic because that's who he's ancestral to, right? He's ancestral to Northern Europeans. But what you need to understand is that Northern Europeans descend from this guy but this guy does not descend from Northern Europeans, right? So Northern Europeans have drift that's associated with this guy, but this guy did not have most of the Northern European drift. In fact, he had very little modern Northern European drift. And these categories, North Atlantic, Baltic, these categories are based on allele frequencies of modern Northern Europeans, right? So modern Northern Europeans got modern drift. This is an ancient individual. This ancient individual does not have modern drift. And with the Oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of like very crazy things with a very high distance. I'm not going to uh, go over them. This is what he scores with MDLPK11. Now the calculator result is just all over the place, but the Oracle is actually very interesting. With the Oracle, he's closest to Gravetians, followed by Kastenki12, uh, Upper Paleolithic, which is Cro-Magnon. So he's closest to these Gravetian people and Cro-Magnons, who um, I guess it's also very typical for them to score a bunch of gibberish, right? This is why he's closest to them. And he's getting modeled as a mixture of Gravetian plus Siberian Ice Age. And this is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. Um, the calculator result, once again, is just complete gibberish. Uh, don't take it too seriously. But the Oracle is very interesting. The Oracle is saying it's closest to Goyet Q116, which I've looked it up. It's a Gravetian individual. And he's getting modeled as a mixture of this Gravetian individual plus some other stuff. So actually, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Gravetian individual plus Finnish or Russian. So he's a little bit more Northern European shifted than this reference Goyet uh, Q116 genome. This is what he scores with Gidrosia K3, and you can interpret this result in a couple of ways. The first way you can interpret this result is you can say, wow, uh, wow, this the really Caucasoid group was really not a thing in the Paleolithic, uh, because all these Paleolithic genomes don't score more than 70% West Eurasian. But the other way you can look at this in, is, wow, 73% of West Eurasian drift already existed by the time this individual existed. So you can, you can interpret it in a couple of different ways, right? 
And here's his result with Panzi and ALK12. And I don't want you guys to go and think, wow, he's scoring all these exotic admixtures. He's only he's only got 37% European Hunter Gatherer and he's scoring all these exotic admixture. He's just such an exotic individual. I want you to look at this and, and realize that Neanderthal on these calculators is scoring 0% European Hunter Gatherer. Absolutely zero. And this individual is scoring 37. So he's actually very European. He's got a lot of modern European drift, much more than people preceding it, much more than Neanderthals, much more than even other Cro-Magnons, because as you could see with the previous calculator, um, Ancient Eurasia K6, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Gravetian plus Northern European. And this is what he scores with the Eurogenes K36. You guys can look at the Oceanian, South Asian, Malayan, and like Amerindian and African and Pygmy, and you can say, this guy has very exotic result, very exotic result, not a European result, but I'm looking at the Iberian and Finoscandian and all the European components he's scoring. Uh, these are Europe, this is European drift, this is modern European drift that this person had. A lot of it, maybe not as much as modern Europeans, right? But much more than Neanderthals. Uh, and in fact, judging on the previous results, more than even the other Gravetians. So, um, as always, thank you guys for watching until the end. You can download the sample in 23andMe format from link, which is going to be in the description. And leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.